because Ron DeSantis's trip to the United Kingdom appears to have fallen, well, a little flat. The Florida governor was in England last week capping off his four-country trade mission trip. He met with business chiefs at an, a fancy event on Friday, some of whom described the Republican as, quote, horrendous and low wattage. According to Politico, one British business figure said DeSantis looked bored and that his message wasn't presidential. Another person said, quote, nobody in the room was left thinking, this man's going places. It felt really a bit like we were watching a state-level politician. DeSantis's international trip was officially promoted as an attempt to build Florida's economic relationships with the UK, Israel, South Korea and Japan. But it's been seen by many in the U.S. as a chance for the governor to present himself as a leader on the world stage. Meanwhile, Governor DeSantis' feud with Disney may be costing him with his own voters. In Celebration, a planned community developed by Disney next to Walt Disney World, some residents say they don't understand the feud and that it's now causing them to rethink their support for the governor. According to the Washington Post, they are concerned about whether they will end up paying a higher cost of living especially after DeSantis threatened to hike utility costs on Disney-aligned properties. Disney, by the way, no longer controls development in celebration, but it is still involved, including operating the utility companies that service the town. The area has about 16,000 residents and has become politically competitive in recent years. The community narrowly broke for DeSantis in 2018, but it backed Donald Trump in 2016 and Joe Biden in 2020, so it is one, Joe, that could go either way. I mean, between the number of, what is it, 80,000 people in Florida who work for Disney and then all of the knock-on businesses that depend on Disney, and now these residents of Celebration who don't like the idea that their cost of living could go up, I'm just, I'm struggling at the moment to see the political upside for Ron DeSantis in this fight. Well, our Florida Republicans who support Ron DeSantis's war on Disney, and you add to that the number of Floridians who love Disney, who take their families to Disney, who who get a yearly pass, uh, who live in Central or South or North Florida, and go to Disney repeatedly, and we know people around here who who do that, who just absolutely love it. Uh, I, I, I've got to say, John, though, talking about Ron DeSantis, that comment that he looked bored, we've heard that from Republican activists when he goes in to talk to them. We've heard it from contributors who say he's downright rude to them. Uh, we've heard it from people who have served with him in Congress saying that he, he was distant and strange and rude. One, one member of the committee sat next to him for two years and said, Ron DeSantis, never said a word to him. That's just the more and more we hear, the more and more we find out that's that's just who he is. And, and Peggy Noonan had a great quote in her column uh, this weekend uh, where she talked to a, a Florida, a, a, a Florida a politico who said, Ron DeSantis' biggest problem is not that we don't like him. It's that we know he doesn't like us. And that obviously mm. it's the wrong profession to be in if you want to be president and you don't like people. Yeah, you know, the thing about, uh, you know, the, the presidency, Joe, as you know, and campaigning for the presidency is not a job that requires people skills. You can, you can be isolated. You can spend time with no human beings. You don't have to do any retail politics. You don't have to go to Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina and, and project any warmth or connection with human beings. You can be aloof. You can be strange. You can be distant uh, uh, consistently. And, and, you, and that's, there's a, a long history of, of successful presidential candidates who have those personality traits. Let's make that list. Oh, right. There, 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 are, yeah. there is no one on that list who, who yeah. falls in that category. And I, I got to say, if you think about uh, the recent history of, of, a, of supposed uh, highly touted challengers to a, to a front runner, most recently, you have to go back and think about uh, uh, someone like Barack Obama, who, who when he ran in 2008, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton was the dominant front runner. He was kind of the outsider candidate who was coming up, and and he he staged over the course of 2006 before his announcement in 2007 a sort of pre-candidacy, right, a ghost candidacy in the midterm elections, and and impressed 
absolutely everyone across the ideological spectrum, certainly within the Democratic Party, but even a lot of Republicans who watched him uh, on Monday Night Football and uh, on Oprah Winfrey and in religious settings with Rick Warren, you know, a, a, a immaculately orchestrated pre and raised a ton of money uh, in, in that in that contest for other Democrats. Uh, r racking up chits across the country so that when he announced in two, February 2007, he was not the front runner all of a sudden, but he was seen as a credible alternative right out of the gate to Hillary Clinton. Think about the opposite here with Ron DeSantis. Have you ever seen a, a sort of shadow candidacy, a run up to an announcement that has been has gone worse for an ostensible leading challenger to a front runner uh, in your lifetime? Uh, there, this has just been uh, this time from uh, the time that DeSantis released his book up through this foreign trip has been an unmitigated disaster for Ron DeSantis' prospects. If he ever had a chance of taking yeah. on Donald Trump, of consolidating the various wings of the Republican Party and being a credible challenger, boy, he has really blown it, it seems to me, over the course of the last two or three months. Yeah, and he just, he does, he t he's got the same routine. It's always owning the libs. It's always owning, which of course doesn't work. It's always uh, owning reporters. We, we had a picture of him there, Jonathan Lemire, at the Museum of Tolerance in Jerusalem. And the clip that comes out of that is not something about tolerance. It's him yelling at a reporter. It's, it's like he loves standing behind a podium, <laughs> yelling at a reporter. He is, in the words of Paul Simon, a one-trick pony. This is what, this is what he does. And, 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 and Jonathan Lemire, uh, you, you contrast that with Donald Trump, who Trump is inviting everybody. All these members of Congress had said that, that DeSantis was rude to him. And kind, he's inviting them all down to Mar-a-Lago, all the Florida representatives. He, he's, he's going after it. Like when he runs, he's going after it. And you sit back and you just wonder, I mean, I keep hearing DeSantis is going to run. Maybe he is, but... My God, this has been a terrible run up. And you never know what's going to happen. You know, everybody was saying McCain, John McCain was out, out of it in 2008 because he had such a terrible start. He obviously came back. The same could happen with Ron DeSantis. But I knew John McCain. John McCain was a friend of mine when he wasn't hating on me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I loved I loved Senator McCain. But, you know, he, he, he had a good, good right hook. Um, and Ron DeSantis is no John McCain. I, I just, uh, he's so badly botched the last couple of months. I'm just wondering, do Republicans really think this guy can come back and beat Donald Trump in the primary? It, they're uncertain. Their faith has been shaking. We've seen from Republican donors, those who don't want it to be Trump again. They were really behind DeSantis. There seems to be some waffling. He is still lead, the leader in the pack of the non-Trump candidates, but there's some real doubts. There's speculation that sometime will be sometime later this month. He will, in fact, jump in, but it's not official just yet. And we keep hearing these stories about him really struggling to connect with donors, with volunteers, with those on the stump, obviously yelling at reporters. And, and, and there's been questions for a while now about his retail pol pol political skills. And maybe Calvin Coolidge, to Holland's point, is a guy who won, who was elected president who didn't really like talking to anybody. Silent Cal uh, was his nickname. But they are few and far between. You contrast that with Trump, who in 16, 2016, kind of was isolated, ran the celebrity route, but didn't do much in the way of the retail stuff. Well, as president, he found that he loved hosting lawmakers to the White House or to Mar-a-Lago or to Bedminster. And he built a lot of these connections with Republican lawmakers, who also, of course, were terrified of his Twitter account, so therefore they had reason to be friendly to him. And now, this time around, he's doing even more of that. He, in fact, he is doing things like going to diners and talking to voters and hugging January 6th insurrectionists while he's there, but he's certainly wooing the Republican lawmaker class and doing it in the state of Florida most of all as an effort just to obliterate DeSantis right at the beginning. He clearly sees him as his largest threat, at least to this point. And to, it's certainly very early. DeSantis has time to turn it around. But it's an uphill climb. And DeSantis is the Trump's lead only seems to be growing.